First task here is to assemble the clutch assembly. And here I'm using some of that graphite grease. Yeah, because I've got it, basically. Various other grease would work just as well in that position. This works, this clutch works by the tension of this spring binds against the inside of that and its little driving tab here couples to this piece so it couples the two together. This has got quite sharp edges. If it's dry it will start galling, it will just cut through the nickel plating inside that drum and it will be rough in its action. It needs to have a smooth controlled drag. So, how do you put this together? Well, you hang the, the spring over the centre part so its tab is engaged and then I use a pair of circlip pliers, uh, crimp lug pliers, to hold that in. I rotate this, pulling the spring in as I do so, so the spring is now compressed, and I can slide the outer component over the top. And this will always turn smoother in one direction than the other. And as luck would have it, the smooth direction is the correct direction for it to work, so all is good. I'll run some synthetic grease through the centre of that. And if I rotate this, it'll drop down into the take up spool and that's all engaged. The guide bush for the top of the film advance has a small gear set on it, these, these two wee gears here. So I want to force some grease in here so I'm putting a big blob of grease on there and squeeze on that with my thumb and the hydraulic pressure just forces that in there. A wipe of grease around the inside where it goes over the shaft. I can drop that into position. If it doesn't immediately fall into position, if you move the take-up spool, you'll see it effectively turns the, the gear and allows that to drop in. So that's seated. Here's a plain screw at this side. Run that down lightly. On the other side is a little ratchet ball. First this spacer goes in. Now that should be plain side up, countersunk side down. If you put it up the wrong way, you'll end up locking up the ratchet ball, it won't work. Then the ratchet ball. then the screw that holds it in place. Now typically here I just give that a wipe at the top with a bit of the synthetic grease where it passes through that ratchet ball and then get this thing seated and run the screw down. Make sure that the pawl is secured around the shoulder of that screw, not trapped underneath it. In other words, that it can move freely. I'm not going to lock that screw up extra tight at the moment. I may need some room to get other things in place. So the spring. Here's the spring for that ratchet pull, and I've got to get that over the screw. And that spring acts to push the ratchet pull towards the centre.
Where's the toothpick when you want one? All right, and that sits around the, the groove in the head of that screw and you can see it just acts to push that ratchet ball towards the centre. It doesn't require an awful lot of tension in order to do that. Okay, more film advance components. This gear here, I need some synthetic grease through the centre. And under the top outer edges there where it fits over the top here. Now this piece, if you drop this in and rotate it anti-clockwise, it should push the pawl out of the way and fall into place just like that. This spring here doesn't really require any lubricant but because it's steel and uh, might be vulnerable to corrosion I normally give it just a quick wipe of grease to protect it. Now this should be cup shaped up. So it's down in the centre here, up at the edges here. This piece sits on the top. Now looking at the position of my film advance here, I'd say that's not sitting where I want it. I'm just going to check that I've got that sitting correctly. Now I'd rather have that sitting started in the start position so I know where I'm going. Let's flip this over. Flip the lock lever out of the way. Rotate this round. Yeah, put the lock lever back. So that's sitting in the rest position. And it just means that things are all aligned nice and square, which doesn't make a hell of a lot of difference except for ease of assembly. Because it'll find its own centre. So that piece goes on. Then this drive dog here. And then that washer. Then the gear. And then the screw. And I did have the screwdriver handy, yes, I've still got it. lever should be holding our film advance at the base so it means that I can tighten this with a screwdriver against that lock lever just like that so that's our film advance shaft all in place and next and put the uh, rewind button lock and things in place now the lock for the rewind button basically this this is lever's task is to lock the rewind button so that once you click it in it stays clicked in until you move the film advance again it's a convenience, it saves you having to hold your finger on the rewind the entire time you're rewinding the film. Not all cameras had that feature and uh, it's a convenience. So there's the return spring for it, the screw that holds it in place is a shoulder screw. The spring must be free to move around one of the shoulders 
the lever must be free to move around the smaller shoulder so that when the screw is done up tight the lever can move freely. Now I've got to hook that spring into place which means lifting it in the tip of the spring and lifting it behind that lever. Unfortunately my tweezers are not helping. Okay there it is. So that's that's spring loaded. And think about the sprocket shaft. Our sprocket goes in here. There's a slot at one end, slot side goes up. I'm lubricating the shaft near the top and near the bottom with some synthetic grease. Normally I put a touch on the little gear on the top just for good measure. And this should slide in from here. If it doesn't want to slide in Slacken off these two screws, move that shaft back a bit because it's, it's very tight. Right, that slid in okay. I'm holding this down with my finger. From the base of the camera, you can see that the catch for the rewind button is across it, so I'll pull that back. I rotate the film advance slightly, yeah, it just engages. This gear allows everything to drop down into place. So that's all ready to go. And that is ready to have the rewind button put in place. And the rewind button, here's our rewind button. The spring, I'll lubricate that with a bit of synthetic grease. Here's the washer that goes on there, and that's ready to go. And the camera back, I'll just clip that capping plate out of the way. I'm not squashing things while I do this. Why won't that drop? That's better. And the mirror tray too. I want them out of the way so when I'm working on the camera like this they don't get damaged. Now the sprocket and sprocket shaft are held together with a single screw. It passes through that slot into the shaft. I'll put that in place. Because there'll be no screwing in the rewind button without this. If you're very lucky, the screw will start straight away without any arguments. If you're not quite so lucky, you'll argue with it a wee bit. If it still gives you grief, Rotate the shaft 180 degrees and try coming in from the other side. Sometimes that hole's got a better lead on it on one side than the other. Can't say that looks very convincing, but we'll give it a go. Here we go, straight in. Why wouldn't you do that the first time? Okay, the rewind button. This just screws straight in on the end of that shaft.
you need to check that the washer goes around the screw not underneath it it doesn't get trapped on the shoulder on that screw so I'm checking that the rewind button does indeed depress and I've got my pliers I'll just do that up you don't need to go mad doing that up I can judge how much to do that up simply by holding the sprocket with my thumb while I do it up and if my thumb hurts it's tight enough okay so that's that all looks good and if we move the film advance would that release that probably let's shift the lock lever out of the way hold back pair release lever rotate this yep that pulled back this allowed the film advance to engage there okay so that part is done Now I need to prepare to close up the base of the camera so that everything's in position here that we need in position and, uh, and then I can put the film advance lever and so forth in place. First I lift the lock lever up and push it to one side. I'll hold back the release lever and I'm going to rotate my advanced shaft a turn and a third from where its neutral position would be a full turn from where we had it sitting so there it is the lock lever is holding that in position so that's all locked it's not running away anywhere if I press the lock lever that will free it up it'll rapidly unspool spool, and I'll have to do it again there's a spring goes in here that the spring for the capping plate that must go in now if you haven't got a spare base plate that you can butcher you can put a piece of tape over that to hold that spring in position I've got a base plate here that uh, is the mortal remains of some parts camera from long long ago and it's been cut down so it'll hold that spring in position, hold the film advance stuff in place, but it's completely open here to allow me to get the front back on the camera later. So I'll put three screws in this plate to hold it in place. And I will fit the film advance lever. Once the film advance lever is on here, the advance can't unspool. Um, we can relax. press down the release lever, release butt shaft there, hold down the lock shaft, I can move the film advance, it swings through its arc, it's nice and free in its action, quite a positive return, that is done, that's the film advance section done at the base of the camera. All right, these two screws up here I can tighten those now, we've got everything in position, Check the film advance again. That action's nice and smooth. That's good. This chrome plate goes on the top. I'll put the strap lug at the end of the body here. Two screws.
the holes in the strap lug are slotted. I've found from experience that as long as the strap lug is pushed towards the end of the body as far as it'll go against those screw heads and they're done up tight, all is well with the world. At this end, we need the cocking rack and so forth. I'll just take some synthetic grease, put it on the cocking rack, making sure I get the teeth there, the teeth there, and underneath. This will drop in there. Now the first tooth should engage at this end. We've got this clamp down here that holds everything in place. Now this has been through the ultrasonic cleaner so it's devoid of any lubrication so I'm just going to put a blob of grease on there and force that in so I can be confident that's not dry and I'll screw this down alright the longest screw goes up here the shortest screw goes here Oops. Try not to drop it down there. There's this support bush that goes there. The screw that goes through the support bush has got quite a pronounced collar on the top of it. And the longer screw goes in here, same as was used for the strap lugs at the other end of the camera, same was used for there. So that should be good. I'm going to check this now to make sure that the film advance completes its stroke fine, which is important if I'd got my timing incorrect here, the cocking rack wouldn't be able to go far enough for the film advance to complete its stroke but that's that's all working well that part's moving nice and smoothly so our film advance basically is complete at this stage well I'm gearing up to put the meter back into the camera because that has to go in early in the stage with the retina reflex S the Reflex 3 of course, it's one of the last components to go into the camera. Unfortunately you don't get that luxury with the Reflex S. So I just put a couple of spots of lacquer on there to make sure that screw doesn't back out. That's entirely uh, optional. I'm not all that convinced it makes much difference. Okay, so the shutter release and the film release buttons need to go in, the shafts. Let's run a little bit of uh, lebdin and paste down there. So my shutter release lead button here, it has the longer spring. There are two springs here, one on the shutter release, one on the no, I've just told you lies. There's the shorter spring. The longer spring goes on the film release button. This runs up against this bracket here, for the meter. Make sure it's in place. The film release button, I'm just running some molybdenum and paste up the centre of that so that it I can be sure that it'll move smoothly on the guide post. That fits on there like that. And we have our exposure meter. 
in this case I've still got my cord attached to the top of the exposure meter because it's not broken and everything looks good. Let's see if I can get this meter seated into the camera. There's a couple of little plastic protrusions on the base of this meter. They should engage with notches, a notch here and a hole here. The tail end of this goes under that bracket there at the end. And it often requires a bit of wriggling to get it seated. There you go, that just fell into place then, just to make a liar of me. So, the running of the cord. First thing to note is that the cord has to go over these pulleys and down through the hole in the casting. And since we've got our little felt pieces of uh, baffles are, are gone here, Get this cord post passed down there and then organise the arrangement of the cord once that's done. Alright, looking at my drawing, I note that the cord coming round the drum this way passes round the bottom pulley here and it then passes from the bottom pulley there to the front pulley here. I'll get my cord untangled here. That one must go to the back. This one must go to the front. Pull those that cord down snug. Make sure that cord's running neatly over the upper pulley. One from the bottom pulley goes to the front. Yes. Which is the opposite for a reflex three I think from memory. Okay. So that part's good. I've got the top part of my cord correctly rooted. That's moving in the correct direction. Now this is all very awkward and easy to get things to fall off here, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to lock my cord there, keep tension on these pulleys at the top, put a couple of washers here, and a screw, and I'll use this to clamp that cord in place. Now to keep these separated I'll pass the rearmost cord, the one on the back pulley, I'm going to pass that over to this side of the screw, the one closest to the end of the camera and the one from the front pulley I'll pass through this side, close to the centre line of the camera. I'm holding some tension on that cord and I'll just clamp that cord up between the washers. So all that's doing is it's keeping some tension on there so that I don't lose it. The problem with handling one of these cameras is that every time you tip the camera upside down there's a likelihood that the meter will fall off the camera and you'll be uh, effectively crippled. I'll put my shutter release button in place and there is a guide post, the post here that fix, the top fits to, fixes to with that uh, pinhead screw, I'll screw that into the body casting. And I will put the top cover loosely on here I think. I don't know if I need to put a full cover on there at this stage. I can put, I've got a shortened cover that I, I can use. Oh, 
what I'm most concerned about is making sure that the meter doesn't fall off and become displaced and then cause me grief having to straighten it out. Because getting the cord in place is awkward. I don't want to have to do the job twice. Okay, that'll stop my meter falling off. My cord here, I can see that it's divided. I, can, I know which one goes where. I know this one is the back poly, this one is the front poly. Here's the drum that I have to hook everything to. It has to pass over these pulleys here on the process. The next part's getting that all wound up.